Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Electric-powered flight across the Pacific is about to begin. A stolen airplane brings general aviation security under scrutiny. A kit-built airplane to become a high-performance UAV. I'm Bree Cross, it is May 6, 2015, and this is Airborne Unlimited. The science and technology of electric flight is being put to the test. The all-electric Solar Impulse 2 is about to begin its crossing of the Pacific Ocean from Nanjing, China. Andre Borschberg will be the pilot for the initial leg of the ocean crossing, which is expected to take as long as five days. Of course, a ditching is something that is planned for, but not anticipated. Still, it is reported that the developers of Solar Impulse 2 admit they are nervous about the crossing. Borschberg will fly the first leg to Hawaii, and then Bertrand Picard will take over and fly the airplane onto Southern California. The plane has a cruising airspeed of about 43 miles per hour and is powered only by electricity generated by the solar panels on the airplane. If they are successful in their overall effort, Borschberg and Picard will become the first people to circumnavigate the globe using only solar energy. A former student pilot allegedly stole an airplane from North Las Vegas Airport at about midnight last Friday landed in one piece and was taken into custody by police. This is the short version of the news that was broadcast on networks and reported by Aero News Network. However, there's more to this story and it could have a negative effect on general aviation. Following the event, the ABC News program Good Morning America not only reported the story, but they provided commentary. In that commentary, the question was raised as to the danger imposed by general aviation's aircraft flying off small airports. The commentary was broadly based on the concept that small airports have a lot of airplanes that could be stolen and used in a nefarious manner. We in general aviation must assure our airport neighbors that we take appropriate precautions to lock our aircraft as best we can and that we are aware that these things, while rare, can occur. Remember, general aviation is always a tasty target for a knowledgeable media hype. GA pilots need to lock up and look out for suspicious activity on the airport. After the break, Sonics eliminates the pilot. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare www.aviationmodificationleaders.com Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. Well, it's not uncommon for those that home build their own personal airplane to also be involved in RC model airplane flying. Now it appears that the connection between home built planes and remote controlled airplanes, as in UAV, is getting closer. Sonics Aircraft has announced that a business collaboration agreement has been signed with Navmar Applied Sciences Corporation for research, engineering, and production of unmanned air vehicles, beginning with a Xenos based line of aircraft dubbed the Taros. The Taros is intended to provide extended range, high altitude performance, and a wider range of environments and perform even more challenging missions than NAVMAR's existing UAV series. Ship sets of Taros aircraft will be produced by Sonics Aircraft at their Oshkosh headquarters and delivered to NAVMAR for integration and operation as UAVs. The first prototype Taros is slated for delivery in June of this year. With some 2,000 Aero TV programs webcast to cyberspace, sometimes it can be fun to look back and enjoy some of the places we've seen, the flyers we've met, and the planes we've flown. Here's a look at one of our favorite Aero TV classic episodes. 
it's probably the most expensive maneuver to, to train that you can think of because you get 20 seconds in the crosswind and 10 minutes in the pattern coming around to get ready for the next one. On this Aero TV program, you'll see one of the greatest trainers ever thought up. Redbird Flight Simulation has developed a trainer dedicated to crosswind training that allows a crosswind practice approach every 90 seconds. Practice, practice, practice. Search Redbird x Win on Aero TV's news channel. After these messages, NASA experiments with electric-powered flight. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Now certified, Aspen Avionics single band ADS-B, ATX-100 and ATX-100G transceivers are the next gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment that we call Around the Patch. Imagine a battery-powered plane that has 10 motors and can take off like a helicopter and fly efficiently like an aircraft. That is a concept being developed by NASA researchers, and they have just flown a scale model of this aircraft. A federal judge in Las Vegas has ruled that Allegiant Air's pilots may not strike. It's reported that the judge said the pilots of Teamsters Local 1224 could not strike while the two sides were in mediation. EAA's Pioneer Airport will be transformed into a fun fly zone on Saturday, June 20th. Up to two dozen ultralights and light planes will descend onto the grass airstrip to participate in EAA's Ultralight Day 2015. Flight Safety International has filed a lawsuit against Dallas Air Motive. The company had performed maintenance on the engines of an airplane 10 days prior to its impacting the Flight Safety Building in Wichita, Kansas after an engine failure. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. Airliners landing at the wrong airport definitely falls into the mega oops category, and the NTSB has taken notice. The board recommended to the FAA that the agency mend air traffic control procedures so that controllers withhold landing clearance until the aircraft has passed all other airports that may be confused with the destination airport. They also recommended modifying the minimum safe altitude warning software to apply the alert parameters for the flight plan destination airport to touchdown rather than automatically reassigning the flight to another airport based on an observed and possibly incorrect trajectory. They cited the January 14, 2014 Southwest Airlines flight that mistakenly landed at the wrong airport in Branson, Missouri as an example, and also noted that there have been other cases in the last few years. It's up to the FAA to decide what actions will be taken. Well, that's it for our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily, Monday through Friday, with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource. 